one subtle form of work salvation is when somebody believes, and this is very uh, popular or very uh, common or uh, prevalent amongst the Catholics and the Orthodox, is they'll say something like, well, I believe in Jesus, but I still have to do my part. I still have to do my best. Now, the problem with that is, is if we read in Romans 11, verse 6, it says, uh, well, let's read from verse 5, actually. Even so, then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So you're part of this remnant by the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, Otherwise, work is no more work. Now, what is this verse teaching? This verse is teaching that grace and works cannot be mixed. You can't have a mixture of grace and works because if you add works to grace, it becomes works. Um, and if you try to add grace to works, it's not going to make it grace. It's still going to be works. So grace and works have to be completely separate. And, you know, we use the analogy when we go out soul winning of a gift. You know, we, if you give somebody a gift even if you had to pay even one cent for it, or five cents for it, because we don't have one cent anymore, right? Even if you had to pay five cents for it, it's not a gift anymore. A gift has to be completely free. Now, it may be a cheap, a cheap purchase, but it's not free. The Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, not the, uh, the purchase, I guess, of, of Christ. Um, so this having to do my part is work salvation because if you add any works to grace, uh, it becomes works. Uh, Romans 4 says here, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So you see, if you work for something, you're no longer receiving it by grace. It's something that is owed to you. It's, it's a debt that is owed to you. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Now, another problem with this uh, doctrine of, you know, having to do your part. You know, I believe in Jesus. You know, Jesus does most of the part, but I still have to do my part. You know, the problem with that is if you have to do your part, do your own part in order to be saved, you're not going to go to heaven because your part becomes the whole part, you know, if you have to do your part. Look at what it says in James 2, verse 8. It says, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. You know, so you're keeping the commandment if you love your neighbor as yourself. But if you have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So James 2 is teaching here that you have to keep the whole law in order to not be a transgressor of the law. So if you have to do your part in order to be saved, you have to do the whole part. Now, sometimes people wonder, you know, why does it say here, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, is he guilty of all? You know, is that verse teaching that if you lie, it's as though you've committed murder. Because some people take this passage to mean, oh, you know, that's all sin is equal. You know, even if you steal a paperclip, that's the same as raping a little child, which is, is totally ludicrous. If you think that, then that, that's crazy. Uh, that's not what that verse is teaching. What it's saying is, if you read it in context of the other passages surrounding it, whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. What does that mean? Well, in verse 9, it says here, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. And again in verse 11, Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So it's not that if you commit adultery, if you don't commit adultery, yet if, that yet if thou kill, you become an adulterer, meaning that you've committed adultery. You haven't. It's saying that you've, you're a transgressor of the law, that you've committed sin, you've broken the law. So that's what you're guilty of. You're guilty of breaking the law as a whole, even though you haven't committed every sin contained within that law, you've um, come short of the glory of God. That's what verse 10 is teaching. Um, but let's look also at Galatians 5. 
another passage teaching the same principle. Reading from verse 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now why is he saying that? Because there were people creeping into the Galatian church, trying to teach that they had to be circumcised in order to be saved. And Paul is saying that if you believe you have to be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So it's not that Christ is going to you know, pay the majority and that circumcision is going to do your part. Uh, Christ shall profit you nothing because he says here in verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. See, isn't that what we read in James 2? That if you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. You're a debtor to do the whole law here. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. Uh, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So that is one subtle form of work salvation. Because they'll say, I believe in Jesus. You know, if you ask them, I believe in Jesus. But then they say, but I have to do my part. If you have to do your part, that's making salvation works. And that is heresy. Uh, 